The NBA playoffs are rolling right along. NFL ownership could be in Peyton Manning's future. The New York Knicks have entered a new era. Matt Harvey took two steps back and now a step forward. It's bonding time for the Brooklyn Nets. And Metal World Peace, are you serious? All that and more on What's the 401 Sports, coming right up. Welcome to this week's edition of What's the 401 Sports. I'm Keisha Wilson. And I'm Mike McDonald. It's good to see everybody today. And we're just going to jump right in to the NBA playoffs. We are now at the conference finals, the NBA's version of the Final Four. Left standing are the Cavaliers, the Celtics, the Warriors, and the Rockets. My friends in TV land and Mike are the Final Four, the NBA's Final Four, shading up how you predicted. And if not, do you need to change your predictions? Absolutely. I thought that the Cleveland Cavaliers were going to come out of the gates and on Sunday uh, against the Boston Celtics, Keisha, and they were just really manhandled by a tough Boston team. So I really expected Cleveland to come swinging, and they did not, and their backs are certainly up against the wall. That was one prediction so far that I've had, that I've had wrong. Now, I get it. It's, this series is still very... You know, we still have a long way to go, but I want to see the Cavs. They have to bounce back, and I'm really pulling for Cleveland. I can't pull for Boston because I'm a Knicks fan, and on top of that, everything that LeBron James has done this playoff run has been nothing short of spectacular. And then, of course, the Houston Rockets. For me, I really expected them to play a little bit better than the way they did in Game 1. I thought that this series coming into it, Keisha, this Western Conference Finals, I thought would be a classic. Now, that prediction that I had has gone out the window. I think that the Golden State Warriors, since they're at full strength and the way that they're playing, clicking on all cylinders, I can't see this series going more than five games. What they did to the Rockets on their own floor in Game 1, that really has me questioning whether or not Houston can stretch this series out to six or seven games. Not at the moment. I don't think so. Well, yeah, this is how I predicted it. Actually, I'm a cool 75%. I did not predict the Celtics to make it to the conference finals. So that was a surprise. And the Rockets and Warriors, I predicted just a couple twists and turns to get to that point that I did not anticipate, like OKC being bounced in the first round. So we are at this time, we have seen game one of both conference finals. And the Cavaliers just got Molly Wop, Dirk Stop, whatever you want to put in there is what happened to them at the hands of the Boston Celtics. But I'm not concerned yet. I feel as though LeBron James, he normally seems to, at least so far, uh, well, minus the, Taraptor, the Toronto Raptors series, seems to take the first game and try to get the lay of the land and see how things are shaping up and what the other team is look, looks like. Now, they played Boston in the regular series, but this is playoff Boston, a, I guess, seasoned young core, and the man, that man-child, Jason Tatum, is really just leading the charge along with Terry Rozier. So I... I I expect that the, the Cavs will bounce back in some way, shape, or form. The, the Celtics are going to make it in, interesting. They're confident. They know. They're playing with house money. They have nothing to lose. If they win, it's a pleasant surprise. They've shocked the world. If they lose, well, hey, you lost to LeBron James. No big deal. And then going on to the West Coast, I, no, I think the Rockets will still manage to get one at home. I figured that the Warriors would take one of the games in Houston. I just wasn't sure if it would be the first or second game. So I'm, I'm not surprised by the win. Um, I, uh, it was close at, at one point. And then I remember thinking to myself, well, the third quarter is the danger zone. That's where Golden State usually just seems to come alive. I don't know what they have at halftime. I think maybe there might need to be an investigation. I don't know if they're taking rocket fuel. Or I don't know what happens, but they just seem to really just kick in, and that's what happened in the third quarter. So um, I hope it's going to be more interesting. I think the Rockets are definitely going to have fight in them. I don't think they're going to roll over, but um, I, if the Warriors keep playing like this, the, the Rockets really don't have – much of a chance to uh, advance. Right. Well, Keisha, speaking of, we talked earlier about the Toronto Raptors, and up in Canada, head coach, or former head coach, Dwayne Casey, was just fired just off the heels of being NBA Coach of the Year. So, Keisha, my question for you is, at this point, should the Toronto Raps, Raptors just dismantle the whole roster? Well, I feel as though firing Dwayne Casey was a little bit extreme and a bit reactionary. Look, they got swept. It's not a good look that after being number one uh, in the conference for the, uh, to end the regular season that they get swept by uh, LeBron James and the Cavs. But, however, they're not the first. 
team or the last team so far in LeBron James's career to have uh, lost to uh, LeBron. Just think about the former players who have had stellar careers with no rings because they ran into the buzzsaw that was Michael Jordan and his Bulls. So, you know, history seems to be repeating itself at this point. You know, in that respect, but I, you know, I think that I don't think the goal of Toronto should be to dismantle the team, but rather acquire new uh, some some pieces. However, I think the dismantling is going to be a byproduct of them trying to get better because they don't have a lot of salary cap space, they don't have draft picks, and they have some contracts that. I think some teams are not going to want to absorb in a trade. So they're going to be limited in that way um, in terms of acquiring new talent. So it may be that they have to dismantle. But I don't think that should be the primary goal. Yeah, I mean, well, first off with Dwayne Casey, what a job. I mean, in the seven years that he was with the I think it was seven years that he was with the Toronto Raptors, just year after year, a lot of 50 win seasons, getting them to the to the playoffs. That's not easy to do. And we, you know, you can't take that for granted. I mean, here in New York, where the Knicks have struggled to make the playoffs year in, year out, I think that head coach Dwayne Casey did a terrific job with them over the course of the last seven years or so. Now, as far as dismantling the, rap, the, the roster, the Raptors roster, I think some of that will depend on where their direction is as far as hiring a head coach. But I think for right now, Keisha, as you did point out, look, this team, they got swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers, but it's still LeBron James. And I get it that this is a Cleveland Cavalier team that might not stack up with some of the previous seasons, the one that won the championship a couple years ago. But at the same time, LeBron, despite game one of the Eastern Conference Finals against Boston, has just been on a rampage these whole playoffs. I would have liked to see them give Dwayne Casey another shot, another crack at this. This is the guy that's really built up the foundation for this organization, and I thought it was very touching. The letter that he sent, I don't know what newspaper it was, but to the city of Toronto, to the people, the way that they embraced Dwayne Casey for him and his family, without a doubt, maybe uh, most likely not going into 2018-2019 season, but... The year after that, I guarantee you that Dwayne Casey is going to be a hot prospect for a head coaching job of the NBA, without a doubt. Right. I think that the Raptors are going to find that Dwayne Casey was not the cause of their ills. And, you know, I think maybe start looking at uh, GM Masai Ujiri because he's the one who gave Dwayne Casey the roster that he has, and he took it to the, the fullest that he could. Absolutely. Um, so now that you have no draft picks and you have some bad contracts on the – that's not Dwayne Casey. He did not have any personnel decision-making capabilities. So we'll see. I think there might be some tough times ahead for Toronto. So, Mike, we're going to go across the border, and we're going to land in Detroit, where another team has fired their head coach. The, the, the Detroit Pistons announced that they have fired head coach and general manager Stan Van Gundy. Now, they are... They have said that they're interested in speaking with Becky Hammond to fill the coaching vacancy. Mike, do you think that the NBA will see its first female head, excuse me, head coach in the next few years? Yes, I think that they will. I think that you're going to get it strongly pushed by the commissioner's office. You're going to get it strongly pushed by a lot of players, and you're going to get it strongly pushed. Co- pushed by a head coach Greg, uh, in Greg Popovich. You know, the thing with Becky Han- Hammond, one of the biggest things that she has in her favor is the fact that she is working for one of the best organizations in all of sports. Not to mention she's got the pedigree. She's a former professional athlete. She's been doing this. Experience is not necessarily something that, that is not, you know, she has it without a doubt. Are there more people capable as uh, with in coaching than she is? Look, one thing we've seen with coaching in all sports recently Right with the the um, Los Angeles Rams with Sean McVay and of course the Yankees with Aaron Boone, people are not organizations in all of sports are willing to take a chance on something that's different, whether it be a broadcaster like Aaron Boone or a young guy like McVay. I think the way that the NBA, which is the most progressive sport out of all the major North American sports, I think that this is something that they're going to be very open to. And the last thing that I'll say. One thing that also goes in her favor was a letter. I don't remember the newspaper that it was. I think it might have been on the Players' Tribune, Derek Jeter's website. But Pau Gasol wrote a very touching promotion for Becky Hammond saying she deserves it. And it's not because, you know, her her gender, take that out of the picture. She is qualified. She deserves to have a chance. Whether or not she deserves to have a chance for whatever particular job that she might get, 
more importantly, she has, she, you know, she deserves to get in there for an interview and to show her, you know, what type of person she is, without a doubt. Mike, you hit everything on the head. Um, there's no reason why the NBA will not have its first female head coach within the next three, five years, because one of the most important people being Adam uh, Silver, who's the commissioner, is a champion for it. He had mentioned it when there was initial talk about you know some of the coaching vacancies that were um, become going to possibly be available, and he said, "I don't see why Becky Hammond shouldn't be considered." And when you have a stamp of approval from the commissioner, that really you know sets the tone for the rest of the league. And she has just the pedigree she has the ear of the players they respect her they respect her as a person she has a pulse she knows how to relate to them she i mean there's just so many there's no reason why she shouldn't and i don't know if detroit will be the landing spot for her i can see greg pocket Greg Popovich, head coach of the San Antonio Spurs, just handing the keys over to her when he's ready to retire. Now, we don't know how long it will be before Popovich decides to hang it up but um, and whether or not she'd be willing to wait. She might decide that she doesn't want to wait for Popovich to you know, hand her the keys that she will actively pursue um, head coaching positions on her own, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's long overdue. We have men coaching uh, female sports, whether in the professional or collegiate level, so there's no reason why it can't work in the other direction. Absolutely. So we're rooting for Becky Hammond and, and other women who achieve, who aspire to be head coaches or have other positions in this male-dominated uh, field. So don't go away because when we come back, we'll have more of what's popping. Stay tuned. And now it's time for a quick bite. Former NBA player Meta World Peace told TMZ that in light of Toronto Raptors firing Dwayne Casey as their head coach, they should hire Drake as his replacement. The Atlanta Hawks have hired former 76ers assistant Lloyd Pierce as their new head coach. Los Angeles Lakers point guard Isaiah Thomas is quite bothered that his former head coach Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics did not receive one vote for NBA Coach of the Year. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones believes that Des Bryant could make a quote-unquote significant contribution to another NFL team. Just not his. Ben Navarro, a Carolina Panthers ownership hopeful, has reached out to Peyton Manning to be a part of his management team should he win the bid. And Mike, we have a quick question for you. Tiger Woods showed flashes of brilliance at the TPC Sawgrass. How do you think, or where do you think Tiger is on his comeback? Uh, if he's going to get this comeback going, it's got to be sooner than later. He's getting up there in his years. What he did this past, over the, you know, recently, he's getting it going in the right direction. But it's got to happen sooner than later. No question about it. I think as long as he keeps the momentum going. I mean, this is going to be more of a long game. This is not going to be a quick fix for him. It's, he's not going to turn around in the next couple of months and be Tiger of old. So I think for him, it's just going to be a slow, gradual climb back to the top as he learns to readjust to his new body. Yeah. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. We are a bit away from the 2019 free agency period in the NBA, but that has not stopped teams from putting their claims on Kawhi Leonard, who is due to be a free agent in 2019. The latest being the Los Angeles Lakers. Mike, do you think that the Los Angeles Lakers are in consider are, are, are in serious contention to land Kawhi Leonard? Absolutely. I mean, he's from that area. You know, from Southern California. Uh, I think there was a story that he went to the Dodger game this past weekend with Magic Johnson. Uh, so I certainly certainly that's going to stir up some some. Uh, some controversy for some people. You know, a lot of this comes down to the San Antonio Spurs and whether or not they can convince Leonard uh, to be their guy. To You know, they were all set that it was going to just fall in line from David Robinson to Tim Duncan to Tony Parker, and then Kawhi Leonard was going to be the next man up. <clears throat> it hasn't necessarily worked out that way. And Kawhi Leonard, who certainly is one of the faces now of the NBA, despite the fact that he's not very demonstrative, he's not very vocal on the court, he does let his playing do the talking. There is no doubt about it that these teams are all going to be fighting one another to try to get him to come to their team. But 
from my standpoint, I think that the Spurs are going to have to do a strong sell to Kawhi Leonard to let him know that he is strongly wanted. But to answer the question, Keisha, without a doubt, the Lakers will be in the mix. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of time. We have a whole offseason to see what the San Antonio Spurs can do to heal this relationship with Kawhi Leonard. As far as we know, as of now, the Spurs are not really entertaining any offers for him uh, because they want to keep him. They like him, and they really believe in him and really believe that he could be the face of the Spurs. He, they, the Spurs can offer him the most money. So if he really wants to cash in, he should stay with the Spurs. But if money is not as important or maybe if the difference between the Supermax that the Spurs can offer and another team is you know, negligible, then he may uh, want to bolt to um, L.A. or, you know, there's some other teams that are probably looking to see what they can offer the Spurs or offer him straight out should um, the San Antonio Spurs not reach a trade. Uh, I'm just going to be very interested in how he, how he, he being Kawhi Leonard, operates in a big market. And he's been in San Antonio for a long time now. And it's a big market, but not one of the major markets like New York, L.A., you can throw in Chicago. So, and he's such a uh, uh, introvert that I wonder how he, han he can handle the spotlight that comes with one of these larger markets. Well, we stick with the NBA, Keisha, and head coach of the, of the Philadelphia 76ers, Brett Brown, after they fell to the Boston Celtics in five games of the, in the second round of the playoffs, Brett Brown made the comment that the Sixers are one piece away from becoming a championship contender. Can you agree with that comment? Uh, yes. I think they need a veteran playmaker, somebody who can um, get create his own shots and then also play defense. But uh, kind of touching on what I said about the Raptors, and I believe this even more strongly with the 76ers, is that you don't really want to mess up what you have, this core that you have. You definitely, They're definitely not getting rid of Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, um, I, maybe some of the other talents. J.J. Redick is up for free agency. I think they might they're interested in keeping him and you know this team got them to almost the conference finals and seeing that how the dramatic the turnaround was i mean we were talking about philadelphia not too long ago as being in the bottom of the basement they were almost a laughing stock if not the laughing stock of the league because in the amount of you know over the span of a few seasons they won maybe 20 games 25 games at that and to go from that uh, from that level of play and that level in the standings to being a legit playoff team and ending up being third in the no were they third in the conference yeah. I believe um, is amazing. So I don't think you want to tinker with that, but you definitely could use another piece. And I wonder if Paul George likes tea steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we remove the Golden State Warriors for a moment, because in my thinking is they're going to go out and close out a championship this season, and then next season it's going to be all about three-peating and getting that dynasty four out of five cha championship, four championships within five years. So if we just remove the Western Conference and focus on the East, as far as the Sixers being contender one piece away, one of the things that goes in their favor, I think, is that look at the top teams in the Eastern Conference. There's a lot of hoopla surrounding some of these teams, right? The Cleveland Cavaliers, good chance LeBron's going to wind up leaving after this season. You look at the Philadelphia 76ers, that's a, you know, they're going to have some a chance to really push up if a team like the Cavaliers winds up losing LeBron James. And of course, the Sixers are going to be in the LeBron James sweepstakes. Well, what about the number one seed, the Toronto Raptors? They wound up just firing their head coach. So there's going to be some uncertainty there. And then you look at a team like the Boston Celtics, who without a doubt are a playoff team to stay for many years to come. There's still going to be some question marks coming in next season with the two best players, Hayward and Irving, coming off of these significant injuries. So I do agree with Brett Brown. And the last thing I will say, I like what he's doing here because he's pushing some pressure on management to go out and fix the problems that they have. And he's kind of eliminating that pressure from his players players by making the players go out and make that comment. So by him making this comment, it's showing the fans, look, I'm, tr I'm going out to the, the front office and saying, what can you do for us? Can you help us out? Because we believe that we can go out and win 50 games next season and compete for a title. And I, I really respect that. Yeah. We'll keep it here because coming up is our New York Sports Report. 
Our photo of the week is a picture of Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond, who is in consideration for a head coaching position with the Detroit Pistons. Good luck, Becky. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. We are in a New York state of mind because it's time for our New York sports report. Mike, the search is over. The New York Knicks have announced David Fizdale as their new head coach. Mike, based on what we've heard from Fizdale so far, do you think that this was the right choice for the Knicks? Absolutely. I like the guy's mentality. I think he's a proven assistant coach with the Miami Heat. Played a significant role on developing some of those players down there. Uh, and, and look, if LeBron James is going to vouch for him, I'll, I'll accept that as well. I think that he has the right attitude. I think he has the right type of swagger. Uh, just the way that he handled himself. I was watching the Yankees. I think it was against the Yankees Red Sox. The Yankees were playing the Red Sox last week where he came in for the first pitch and the fans really started to gravitate towards this guy. I just think that he's got composure. The thing is, he's got it on the sidelines. No question about it. The one place where I question David Fisdale is the way that he's going to handle himself after the games, right? After how he handles himself with the media. The biggest question in his past was the way that he dealt with Mark Gasol. For the Knicks, of course, the biggest star that they have is Porzingis. So a lot of people will be paying towards you know, paying attention towards that relationship. But for me, I want to see how he handles the media in the first month when he's coaching this team because let's face it, the Knicks don't have much talent. There could be a lot of losing, and when that frustration comes out, it could be very interesting with the New York tabloids ganging up on this guy. But overall, I think Keisha, without a doubt, he was the right choice. The Knicks got the right one, baby. So I like him. I liked the idea of him being the head coach. I like him as a head coach. He has the right mentality, and I think he's gonna. He's learned from what happened with him in Memphis uh, with Paul with uh, Marcus Saul, sorry, um, and so and that's what life is about. It's about taking and learning lessons and going forward and applying what you've learned from one situation to the next. So I don't think that we. Um, I don't think we have to worry about them. There might be some bumps and bruises as he gets to know his players. But, you know, I think it's so easy to criticize the coach when it comes to player relations. But what if Marc Gasol was a pain in the butt? What if he was unreasonable? What if he was bratty? What, you know, we don't know the other side. But um, he's got the right attitude. And I just, David Fisdell, that is. And I just hope that management gives him the opportunity. Because this is going to take time. This is going to be a slow build. And if David Fisdale can really optimize his strength, which is player development, and then have the general management, general manager uh, acquire the right talent, then, you know, it's all about just moving in the right direction. And maybe it's you only win five more games than last year. But, hey, five games is better than no games or being worse than you were the year before. So I, I like it. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean... People still go see the Knicks play, regardless of how well they do. But I think if Fisdale can re give some uh, rejuvenation to the New York fan base, that would be really great so that fans actually want to come and see the Knicks play rather than go see the, other t the visiting team or just say that they were in the Garden for a Knicks game. Absolutely. <laughs> and speaking of the Garden, we come from the Garden to Barclays where we speak about the Nets and their offseason. Really the word is camaraderie because the Nets, it's now being reported that they have 13 players, which includes Jeremy Lin and of course Timothy Mozgov. They're out in Los Angeles playing a, they're hosting a player organized retreat. And this is really for a bonding purpose and they're practicing as well. Now two guys that have that are not there are Jaleel Okafor and Alan Crabb has not been there as either. Okaf Okafor is actually in Florida working out and there's no word on where, what Crab is up to, but that's good for uh, the Nets because this is something obviously that they would like to work on to get some things together. Because let's face it, this, things are actually going in the right direction for them as opposed to where it was two years ago. Yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. So I mean, if they can develop a chemistry off the court that spills on to the actual playing field or playing court, then all is good. Alan Crab, I'm kind of interested as to why he's not there because he was an integral part of the team and Jalil Okafor. I mean, look, 
things haven't really worked out for him being uh, after being drafted in the top five or top three. I forgot where his position was um, when he was drafted, but it's been a tough road for him. And I would think that this is his new team, maybe one of his last shots to make it in the NBA, that he would want to be a part of the team and really uh, gel with them and see if he can make a contribution and keep a job. <laughs> All right, Mike, we move from the hardwoods of the basketball court to the baseball diamond. And Matt Harvey, he was the star right-hand pitcher at one point. Then he moved to the doghouse or the bullpen, now the outhouse, because the Mets traded him to the Cincinnati Reds. Mike, in his debut, Matt Harvey had flashes of what the New York sensation that we knew him to be. And he pitched four innings and had no um, pitch to shutout, actually. It's a small sample size, but do you think that this will be the turnaround, the new start that Matt Harvey needs to get back to dominance? I think that this was needed. He needed to get out of New York. There's no question about it. Let's face it, the guy's just been a bum the last couple of seasons after such a hot start to his career. It's been more negativity than positivity, and a lot of that is in the New York Post and the Daily News reporting on his late nights with you know, carousing and this and that. Um, so I think that this was definitely a fresh start that he needed, no doubt about it. Um, you know, as far as whether or not he's going to be able to turn his career around, it's going to take some time for us to see that. I think that the Cincinnati Reds is actually a good fit for him. It's good for him to stay in the National League. It's a lot tougher to be a pitcher in the American League as opposed to the National League. Um, but he needed this. There's no question. And I'm pulling for the guy. I mean, he's had a lot of just so much, so many bad things have happened to this guy over the course of the last couple of years that it's just been this just really this horrible downfall. But I am wishing him the best. I'm not a Met fan, so it's not like this is something where I can imagine that there are a lot of Met fans that are very bitter towards this guy. They got the jersey. They were hoping for the Dark Knight to turn things around. And now they're just wishing that he's you know, not performing well. But from my standpoint, the Major League Baseball, they... they one thing they do is they take well, you know, good care of their all stars and their stars, the people that have, they've made the face of the game. Matt Harvey, for, for some time, was one of them. I'd like to see him get back to that spot. Our athlete of the week spotlight shines on Becky Hammond. Becky realized early in her career not to put any limitations on her future, and because of her. More women will not only vie for roles that are traditionally held by men, but they will also occupy them. We appreciate you, Becky, and we're all rooting for you. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. And now we're going to go off topic. And Mike, this one hits a little close to home. In an act of what might be considered social justice, Rapper Young Dolph gifted $20,000 to two Duke University baristas after they were fired for playing his music during their shift at the coffee house. Not only did he gift them some money, he also invited them to his performance at the Miami Rolling Loud Festival. Very nice, huh? Well, it's about that time we have to say goodbye to all of our friends, but don't worry, you can keep up with us until we meet again next week by following us on Instagram and Twitter, liking us on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel, all at 4 one Sports TV. Also, be sure to download our podcast on Google Play Music, Spotify, and Stitcher. I'm Keisha Wilson, and on behalf of Mike McDonald, we'd like to thank you for joining us this week, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.